happy lunar and solar eclipse phase or season. I have been in my little cocoon lately just because it's been so intense and I know a lot of people are feeling this. The topic friendships, relationships in general have been so strong and this is the whole topic of this beautiful phase of these uh, couple of days that we are allowed to reflect um, and experience the truth about certain relationships in our life. There is always a fine line with everything. Some of you might know the serenity prayer, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So that fine line I'm talking about is the difference. Do we know the difference between, for instance, where this fine line lies, this friendship is worth me talking it out, or this friendship is not worth talk me talking it out, you know? And a lot of times what we do is we point the finger, especially in during the season right now, during the, the lunar and the upcoming solar eclipse, it's, it's such an emotional time and a lot of things are being brought up, not only about friendships, but also about yourself. And guess what? Relationships tell you so much about you. In the past couple of days, I've learned so much about myself and things that I've known and I was kind of like aware of, but not truly seeing and not truly acknowledging because a part of me didn't want that to be true. You know, that was just an ego that, for instance, didn't want that to be true. But then also I learned that you know some people aren't worth your time and some people aren't worth your energy as much as i do give a lot of people my my heart and my time and energy at the same time i might hold a grudge for a very long time because of a uh, you know a psychological protective mechanism so that i don't open up again and that you can stab me again if that makes sense people have been you know, using me as their punching bag, getting triggered, and then apologizing after. And then I just had to reflect, is it worth, you know, I, I forgive you, but do I want to continue this friendship? Do I know you? Do we have so much history that I find it sad to not have you in my life? And with some people, I was like, you know what? I don't really, I forgive you, but I don't really care. I don't, I don't want to be around someone like that right now. It's just not for me. And then with some friendships, relationships, it was worth it. And I was like, yeah, no, I have to talk this out. It's all about that fine line, knowing that seeing and sensing and feeling this fine line between is this person triggered by me or am I triggered by them or are we both triggering each other because it's such a it's a mirror for the both of us. And guess what? Those are the biggest blessings. The biggest blessings are when both of you are triggered. And even if you only are triggered or that person is triggered, that, that has nothing to do with the other person. So a friend of mine told me, instead of you saying, <clears throat> I trigger this person, <laughs> just, you know, formulate it in a way this person see something in themselves in me that they don't like about themselves so it's their problem it's not my problem i i can't control their actions their reactions their thoughts their emotions their i can't control their process and there are people that are triggered for instance that's why um that fine line is so important to know am i triggered by this person? Is it my problem? Is it, is it a blessing for me to see and then resolve and heal without pointing the finger? Because this is what a lot of people do. We point the finger. When we can sit down and really reflect, and this is something I personally love to do, but frankly not a lot of people like to. It's just very important to not point the finger. And there are people that will be challenged to sit down with you during this time and talk it through. But maybe some people in your field don't want to talk it through. 
maybe they want to run away or point the finger. And if that keeps happening, you have to ask yourself, is this friendship worth it? Is it worth it? I forgive them. You know, you have to forgive them. Forgive yourself. Because it starts with you. But ask yourself, is this friendship worth it? I mean, me personally, during this time, super intense. And um, I've had actually, I, I all of a sudden, right during this time, <laughs> um, found out that two friends of mine that I actually put into my heart and I helped out so often, I, I gave them so much time and energy of mine, especially my wisdom, I shared so much of enlightenment. I was part of their enlightenment process, which is okay. This is, this is what our soul contracts do, you know, and I'm aware of that, so it's okay. So, but I, I've, I heard that they um, didn't talk very positive about me behind my back. I just chose to talk about it with them and they chose to reply to it. But then when I asked, did you really say these things? I'm just wondering, you know, you could be honest with me. I, I value honesty. And they chose to run away. And so I can't control that. I'm not gonna run after, you know? I'm gonna stay with me and decide for myself, what, is this friendship worth it, you know? and. To me, the friendship was nice, and it's, it's not something I need to have again, you know what I mean? So I decided for myself to see that fine line and to see, okay, am I getting triggered because of this? Of course, it hurt me, it shocked me, but at the same time, I decided that the friendship is not something that I really want to run after, if that makes sense. I don't even want to run after anyone. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's really worth uh, running after someone. And then sometimes you're just like, it's okay. You know, it will be how it will be. And it's, it's all good. This time will bring up so many things. And it might be that you're getting triggered a lot by people. Or it might be that others are getting extremely triggered by you. In my case, that's the case. A lot of people are getting triggered by me. Um, but I was always that kind of person. Even as a kid, I used to just sit there in class and the teacher just didn't like me for some reason. So I just have this little mirror in me and I, you know, a lot of times healers and, you know, powerful uh, intuitives, we have this trait already naturally because we are here to enlighten you meaning be a part of your enlightenment on this path as like a little sign you know like go this way otherwise this and this will have you know so it's like a little sign and we're already naturally um you know the witches they are naturally already meant to trigger a lot of people because of their purpose in life and that's why we can't take it personal. People like us, we can't take this personal. If someone is triggered by us and it triggers us, we have to look into that because true love is detached love. And that doesn't mean, okay, detached love doesn't mean that I don't like you and I'm going to ignore you. No, true love, detached love, is when you are emotionally detached from every and any outcome that this person's actions um, are reflecting sort of in your life. So if this person, if my friend or my family member or my husband even or my child chooses to not reply to my text for 10 days, I'm going to have to find that true love in me, that detachment. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it can be challenging because it's like, why is this person not texting me back? Oh, this is my husband. I mean, what's going on? Is he cheating? I mean, and when those things come up, cheating, the negative things, that's, that's exactly that point where you have to stop 
and reflect and say, why am I thinking those things? Where is that coming from? This insecurity of mine. Am I losing him? That's an insecurity. That has nothing to do with what this person is doing. Maybe this person is just taking its time. Maybe your, your wife or your husband that is not writing you back for 10 days is like somewhere out in the wild and doesn't want to talk to anyone right now. And that's true detachment. I don't care what anyone else says. Like, meaning I see a lot of couples having rules like, okay, at least, you know, we call each other at least this and that when we're on vacation, you know, separate vacation. But true detachment, true love is detached. So you're not going to be angry or worried or frustrated with that person. Um, or with your friend, you know, if, if you ask your friend out and they're like, you know, they write you the next day, hey, sorry, no, I, I was out with someone else yesterday. Don't take it personal, you know, and this is something I had to work on and I'm still like catching myself and still working on to not take things so personal and to just see those things as an opportunity for me to love them even more because that is true love and that is having an open heart. If you know that these people are on their own path, have their own life, and that in the end we're all one, we're all just experiencing each other, the universe, then there's nothing to be mad about. There's no fear. Even, even if someone cheats on you, if you are detached, you can emotionally, detached emotionally, then you can just accept that and love that person. And I know that is like one of the most challenging parts of being a, a human is to be detached emotionally. So this is not something they teach us actually. Every movie teaches us to be emotionally attached, which is ego-based love. If you are emotionally detached, you are truly loving yourself, truly loving the world, the people, the animals, the universe, everything around you and inside of you. Because ego-based love attaches itself and then gets angry and frustrated when that person doesn't do what you want them to do. And that's exactly the key. That's exactly the key to friendships and relationships um, is to be detached emotionally for your own peace for this friendships peace imagine imagine the life where we would take nothing personal you know and of course there are times when someone actually punches you in the face you you see the fine line and you're like okay is it worth it to be with this person or not detached love is like you you can care about them but you don't have to control them because attached love is control and that's, and I, I don't care, anyone can tell me, but I love this person, I love my friends, I love my family, and they're just not like calling me as much as I want, or they're not coming out with me as much as I want, they're not seeing me every weekend. This is just creating problems in your life. This is just creating frustration and tension in that exact connection that you actually wanna love. And the key is to release this emotional attachment, which is nothing bad. This is actually something that is extremely healthy because it brings the relationship a lot of freedom and love and, and there's no hard feelings. We've had a friend of ours here in, in Brazil and we've made plans like two times already and twice he, he all of a sudden disappeared and didn't write back. And, and it was okay. I, I literally didn't take it personal. And I love that. It's so beautiful because this makes our friendship deeper. It makes our friendship more peaceful, more trustworthy. Because I'm not going to be controlling and be like, where is this guy? Why isn't he writing back? Why isn't he here? We made plans, getting upset about it. No. I tuned in. And I was like, you know what? I feel like he's going through something emotional. I think he's just, you know, he, it's not a good day for us to meet up. And that's literally what happened. That's literally what happened. And if we all just use a little more feeling, sensation, telepathy, and openness, things 
can be so much more peaceful in our relationships and in ourselves because the way you handle friendships and relationships is the way you handle yourself. So this time is amazing. Use this time to really reflect upon your relationships. Use this time to contact those people that you want some clarity from. And if they point the finger or run away from that clarity, that means they're just not ready to do what you are doing. So let them be, let them go with a loving heart and don't force a friendship because everything happens naturally. Everything happens through flow, when we flow. And, you know, even with family members, we have to know that our family members, they are family members for a reason, and they teach us so much about our uh, triggers because a lot of times people experience family members as hard <laughs> and suppressing and you know things are being suppressed emotions are being uh, valued or people are running away or people people are literally on top of each other and like fighting and and it can be a lot of trauma for for a lot of people and yeah frankly we live in a world where right now this trauma has has been you know, surfaced so much and more and more people are looking at their lineages and are cutting cords with the, the past so that they can move on with freedom. And I encourage you to do the same if you aren't on that path yet because it, it will bring the future generations so much ease in life. And you know, even when at this time you are speaking to a friend or a family member, even if that person isn't ready to look at themselves and to admit that yes, they did this wrong or they have this to look at and, and reflect and heal, if they're not admitting something about themselves, that's out of your control and that is not your job. I understand as humans, we, as this attached love, with the attached love, which is ego-based, remember that, if it's ego-based, then we always want the other person to admit what they did wrong. We want the other person to tell us, to admit what was wrong about them and what is bad about them and what they have to heal. But in that moment, when they can't do that, who cares? Be detached emotionally and make yourself the queen or the king of your reality. I know, you know, we all know that these triggers are here for us to grow. So how stupid and ignorant and ego-based would it be if we would choose to ignore this? How dumb, <laughs> ego-based would it be for us to not take that opportunity? And so what I did, what I do in those moments I step back and I think and channel and I reflect in that moment, what am I doing wrong? What is it about me? Am I even doing something wrong? Because sometimes, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're being gaslighted. Sometimes there's a narcissist in your life that is trying to make you feel a type of way and you're making things up about yourself. That's where the fine line comes in. But then sometimes there is something that you can do better. And so in that moment, when you do realize that, speak it out because it will help you. I'm telling you, it's going to help you so much. Get out of that ego-based love. Be detached and love yourself. And say, hey, you know what? I just reflected and this is what I do because of this. And I'm going to reflect on that more and, and I'm gonna work on this. So thank you for being here as my trigger. And it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me, with my work, with my inner work. And if the other person can't say anything back about themselves, well, that's not in your control. And that is not your job. You can, of course, you can tell them, hey, I feel like 
you should heal this part of yourself. But in the end, what is going to help us is when you receive feedback and you reflect upon it and you see that fine line, okay, is this person just telling me this because I'm reflecting them or is this person telling me this because there's actually something there? And that's where this fine line comes in. Serenity prayer is so good for this. The wisdom to know the difference. Know the difference between I am triggering them and they're just hitting me right now, using me as their punching bag, you know. And then there are situations where it's like, oh, a monkey. Hi. Hi, munchkin, come here. Oh, he's getting close. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and really take this time to reflect what's coming up for you and, you know, push through it. And it's okay. It's going to come up and then it's going to release. And this is going to help you to upgrade and to level up to the amazing, beautiful, higher self, to the consciousness that, that we're all in already. But it's just the embodiment is on its way because the body is the last thing that kind of you know, really embodies something. It's, it, it goes soul, mind, and body. Well, I love you so much, and I send you so much strength, reflection, love, detached love, and I'll see you in the next video.